morning everyone and welcome to morning prayer on Thursday the what is it 15th of uh, October beautiful sunny morning a bit chilly I think they're nice and warm in here though um, if you're following morning prayer this morning with the other readings that I shall not be reading this morning um, the psalm set for today is Psalm 99 the Old Testament reading is from 2 Kings, chapter 9, verses 17 to the end of that chapter. 2 Kings 9, 17 to the end. Um, and when we get there, we will be reading from the book of Acts, chapter 27, verses 27 to, to the end. Um, to the end of that chapter. 27. Chapter 27, verse 27, to the end. So let's pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, Set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And the Thursday Canticle. I have given you as a light to the nations. I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Now that um, scripture reading from the book of Acts, um, Sorry, it appears that we may be joined by a cat in a moment. He likes to join morning prayer. Book of Acts, Acts 27, verses 27 to the end of that chapter. When the fourteenth night had come, as we were drifting across the sea of Adria, about midnight, the sailors began to suspect that they were nearing the land. So they took soundings and found twenty fathoms. A little farther on, they took soundings again and found fifteen fathoms. Fearing that we might run onto the rocks, they let down four anchors from the stern and prayed for day to come. But when the sailors tried to escape from the ship and had lowered the boat into the sea on the pretext of putting out anchors from the bow, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Unless these men stay in the ship, we cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the boat and set it adrift. Just before daybreak, Paul urged all of them to take some food. Sorry. Um, to take some food, saying, Today is the fourteenth day that you have been in suspense and remaining without food, having eaten nothing. Therefore I urge you, take some food, for it will help you survive for none of you will lose a hair from your heads. After he said this, he took bread, and giving thanks to God in the presence of all, he broke it and began to eat. Then all of them were encouraged to look for food and took food for themselves. We were in all 226 persons in the ship. After they had satisfied their hunger, they lightened the ship by throwing the wheat into the sea. In the morning they did not recognise the land, but they noticed a bay with a beach on which they planned to run the ship ashore if they could. 
so they cast off the anchors and left them in the sea. At the same time, they loosened the ropes and tied the steering oars, then hoisting the foresail to the wind, they made for the beach. But striking a reef, they ran the ship aground. The bow struck and remained immovable, but the stern was being broken up by the force of the waves. The soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners so that they might swim away, um, so none might swim away and escape. But the centurion, centurion wishing to save Paul, kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and make for the land, and the rest to follow, some on planks and other on pieces of the ship. And so it was that they were all brought safely to land. Gosh, what a story. Sorry, I lost my place in there, thanks to uh, the pussycat treading on it. Um, wow, what, um, what a story. Um, as you know, we've been following through the Book of Acts and today actually is the last Thursday in the Book of Acts. So next Thursday we will, we will have finished the books. Um, do continue reading on yourself. As you know, the, the, the Book of Acts was written by Luke. It's a follow on to, to his gospel writings. So he, he is the one that is writing this. It's not um, a Pauline writing. And um, if you are a theologi theological scholar and you like to study the, um, the books, you, you will notice very much that this is not how Paul writes. Uh, and in fact, he, um, Luke writes what Paul says quite differently from what Paul says, not incorrectly, just in a different way. Um, so if you go on and read the letters, which we will be going on to after this, um, you, you'll notice quite a difference. So as Luke is writing this, he's writing, we, we did this and we did that. It, it starts off with um, 14th day night had come and we were drifting across the Sea of Adria. So Luke is travelling with Paul. We don't know who other travellers are. We do know that there is another um, chap called Arist Ar oh. Aristakis. Aristakis. He was um, from Thessalonica um, and we meet him in Thessalonica earlier on um, and we know that he's travelling. So there's three of them travelling um, um, and it's thought that that was just those three. It would have been very unusual for Paul, a prisoner, to have fellow travellers. So we don't know whether Luke was also a prisoner or whether because Paul was considered a quite... Um, valuable prisoner um, that he was allowed to have friends with him um, to help him survive so that he would get to Rome um, and and um, and go in front of um, the courts there which was what was wanted um, so um, and where they've landed today in case you don't read on um, is Malta um, and of course a thriving Christian community still today, as are all the places that we hear about. The book of Acts is is the Acts of the Apostles. It's often known as the Holy Spirit book um, because we see how the Holy Spirit is working in the lives of the Apostles as they take the Gospel out into the world. But the last, I think it's 13, the last 13 books of Acts are devoted to Paul. Um, and Luke calls him an apostle and a witness. Though, of course, we know the stories that um, Paul wasn't actually a witness to Jesus in the same way um, as Luke was, uh, as the other apostles were. He may have seen Jesus speaking. They are contemporaries. We don't know, but, um, but we know that Paul was um, obviously the one that was trying to kill the Christians in the first place. Um, so he wasn't a follower and a witness in the same way, but, but Luke refers him to that as a witness and an apostle, which shows the real importance that all the apostles felt um, for Paul. And of course he was, um, you know, most of our, old, our New Testament is Paul's writings. So um, Luke 
So, taken by Paul and Paul's teaching, follows him to Rome, with him to Rome, knowing that what is quite possible to happen and what does happen in the end is that they will be killed. So another one of those stories where we think, gosh, you know, it, this is this is happening at the time. It can't be fake. <laughs> it, it's got to be real. They must have known and believed and heard Jesus and, and believed so strongly that they were willing to put their lives at risk and, and in the end lose their lives for Christ. And these stories um, in these last this last chapter and, and the chapter previous where they are on their way to Rome in this boat and uh, I mean what a nightmare journey <laughs> nearly losing their lives many many time on the you know even when they get to Malta um, they go aground on the rocks uh, and the boats being broken up by the by the waves so even that safety they, um, when they get to safety, they're not, they're not safe. It's um, a dire journey. <laughs> oh, the seasickness must have been awful. Um, but Paul doesn't worry. You know, throughout this, if you read back through um, these last chapters, um, you know, Paul is for always saying, you know, don't worry, it's okay. We must stay in the ship. We will be fine. God's with us. Um, we must eat a little bit of food. We are going to survive. Come on, keep your strength up. Um, and that there's not a hint from him that anything untoward is going to happen. It's a dreadful, awful journey, but it's going to be okay. Um, so strong is his belief that um, God has set this path, this journey for him, and he will finish it because that's what God wants. So I think that's what's to take for us today that this journey however up and down however absolutely awful it is at times because we all go through those dreadful times whether it's our own health whether it's the health of loved ones um, whether it's housing job disasters just life throws the most awful things at us sometimes, doesn't it? And we can feel at sea, all at sea, um, and storm in, in the storms. But we must have faith as Christians, as faithful ones, that God does have a plan to bring us through, that he has direction for us, he has purpose for us. And we cling to that and in faith step out into the storm and work our way through it knowing that we will come out the other side and we will be fed and we will be safe let's pray so father god we lift to you today ourselves all that's in our hearts and minds all those fears and worries those joys and the many blessings that you bestow upon us. And we thank you, God, that you promise that you are with us every step of the way. That you will not abandon us in those difficult times. But that you will continue to bless us with all good things. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And so, Lord, we pray for those around us and around the world who are suffering, who are in the midst of storms. We pray particularly for our Christian brothers and sisters in places where they are persecuted or where there is war and conflict praying especially this morning for our brothers and sisters in Armenia and Artsakh. Praying for all who are suffering in conflict, for it is always the innocent that suffer the most. 
We pray, pray for those around us in our communities. Any who are at this moment waking up and perhaps wishing they hadn't. Praying for all who are suffering from depression or any kind of sadness and grief. We look around our communities and give thanks for the many blessings that we enjoy living in this beautiful area. For this morning's sunshine. For those whom we love. For those we care for. We pray for our churches in this place, in our benefice for all who would normally come but can't, for all those joining us online who don't normally come to our churches. And we think particularly of all of those in our, on our prayer lists, those you've asked for prayers for, for those you hold close in your hearts and minds. We pray, Lord, that they would know your comfort, your healing arms around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray and give thanks for all of those whom we love and see no more. We give thanks for your promise that there is a place for everyone with you. We give thanks for the love we shared and we pray for those who face funerals this week, those who have anniversaries at this time of year and for all of those who grieve and have no one else to pray for them. So the collect, O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, as we, truly trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversary. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless you. Have a good week. See you soon.